Okay, so uh, last week, if you recall on Thursday, we had this wonderful quiz. Uh, and most of, or everybody in here has their quiz back now. Uh, but after the quiz, we started talking about limits. And that's going to be the first major topic of the course. So we're going to continue with that today, and I'll just briefly recall what we did. Since we have a limited amount of time today, no pun intended. Uh, <laughs> sinking in. I would love to see like the 10 seconds later the last one starts. So we want to talk about one-sided versus two-sided limits. And if we have time, uh, so I'm going to call it the algebra of limits. That's what hopefully we can get through today. Uh, from here, once we get through today, then we're going to also start talking about computing some more difficult ones. Today we're going to stick to some pretty easy ones. Uh, and then later on in the week, we're going to talk about infinite limits. Right, so, uh, well, we'll get to that later. So, let's recall that if we have a piecewise defined function, so for instance, uh, I think last week we looked at something like this. Maybe it was a four. Something. If we have a piecewise defined function, we can get some funny things when it comes to limits. Okay, so we'll quickly graph this again. <coughs> All right, so we have a function which is defined as this nice parabola shifted up 1 when x is negative. At 0, you actually get the point 4. And once you go positive, you just get the line y equals x shifted up by 3. Okay. And what we saw is that, well, if you move down this curve, it's approaching the value 1. Right? It doesn't actually hit the value 1, but it's approaching it. So we used the word target, right? And the, the metaphor was, okay, you're the general of an army and you're gonna nuke some, uh, some weapons factory, right? And you put down, there's my target, that's what I wanna hit, okay? Do you actually make sure that you hit that target? Well, you hope so, but right, you, know, you know those crazy missiles just go everywhere, okay? And so what we feared, of course, is that we might hit an orphan, you know, or walking down the street or maybe a whole, Orphanage, right? And we kill a whole bunch of orphans. But from the general's perspective, he did his job when he's targeting the, the weapons factor. Right? So, from our point of view, when we talk about limits, we don't care what if we hit orphans or not. Okay? All we care about is targeting the weapons factor. Okay? And that's what the limit is. It's just where it's going. You don't actually care what it is. So, some examples. Have a fall. Well, let's say, uh, let's go right here. Um, when, oh, say you're at minus one. Okay. Well, this, this function x squared plus one at minus one is going to approach the value two. Turns out it will actually hit. So, good job, guys. You didn't hit the order. So we can write down that as x goes to minus 1, our function targets the number 2. Okay. It happens to hit it there, but that's completely incidental. Okay, We only care about what it's targeting. Yeah? Well, that would be 3. Uh, well, let's see. We're going to put in 1. No. 1 squared plus 1 is 2. So 1 plus 1 is 2, just so we're all on the same page. <laughs> it's okay. Okay, and 
one thing that I'm hiding under the rug here is I came down this maybe from the left side and looked at it, but I also could have come up the right side and looked at where it was going. Okay, but it doesn't matter, right? This one it hits the same place, so we just write this expression. But as we get closer to zero, then what side we're coming in does matter, right? If we target from the left or target from the right, the tar you're getting different targets. Yeah. Okay, so for instance, maybe there's two generals now. One is a, a good left winger, and the other is a right winger. Okay, and the left winger says, "Well, we, well, we should be, you know, targeting, uh, you know, one factory, and the, the the right winger says we should be targeting another factory." Okay. So that's the situation we have. So let's see if we look as x approaches zero. The left winger says we should be targeting what? <coughs> One. And remember the way we denote that we're coming from the left is we take the number that x is approaching and put a superscript, either a minus if it's coming from the left, or a plus if it's coming from the right. And okay, now if it's coming from the right, what is the function targeting? Three. Targeting three. Very good. Now if the two generals, one from the left, one from the right, can't agree on what they're going to target, well, then you can't give the order, right? You can't say, okay, we're targeting this factor. So, the order for targeting at zero does not exist. the limit from the left does not equal the limit from the right, then the limit without any reference to left or right does not exist. The same thing would be true if one of these didn't exist, even, and the other did, then of course they're certainly not targeting the same thing. Okay. So, if the two generals agree, you can, uh, then, then you get a limit. All right? If they don't agree, you don't get a limit. Okay, fine. Uh, now, these here uh, are what you're not going to be surprised. Now are called one-sided numbers. And I think the motivation for calling them such is obvious. This one here is a two-sided number. And what we've just discussed is that a two-sided limit exists if and only if both one-sided limits exist and And they are the same. Okay. Any questions? Pretty straightforward, right? Okay, so let's do an example where we don't have a graph. This is an easy one. Uh, what is the limit? Example A. The limit is x goes to 2 of x squared minus x plus 1. You can use words. Three? Three? Okay. How do you get three? Okay, you plug the two in. Okay, now if you plug the two in, this will come out to be three. Okay, no problem. Right? Turns out to be the correct answer. 
But what doesn't sound right about just plugging the, the two in? Um, anybody? Yeah? So usually you have to manipulate the um, equation somehow because for, I don't know, like if it was on, if it was like a fraction, you'd have to cancel. Okay, so you're using pre-knowledge. <laughs> oh, yeah. So let, without using pre-knowledge, uh, what, what did I say you know, is the point about these limits? That it's not what you target, like the target. You're looking for your target, not for the exact number. Exactly. All right. When I write this, it does not mean, at least a priori, that I can just plug it in and see what I get. I really have to see what happens near to. I have to say, okay, very close to two what's happening, right, on the left and the right. And if they agree, all right, then boom, I can write down this three. Now, it's going to turn out that a lot of functions you can just plug in the value. Those are really nice functions. And we're going to give those a name. So this does things a little bit out of order from the way textbooks like to do it. But I think now is the perfect time, given our metaphor. War. So, if you were not only a good general, but you were really good at getting your people to do what you told them to do, and you had really good equipment, then when you said, target this weapons factory, where's that missile going to hit? You're going to hit the target, it's going to hit the weapons factory. It's not going to kill the orphans. Right. So those are the kind of functions we want to deal with. Ones where they don't just have a limit, right? We didn't even just target something. They should hit their target. Right. So when mathematicians talk about nice functions, that's what they're talking about. They're talking about functions which hit their target. So i give you a little definition. It's going to come in two parts. Then we'll come back and do more examples. Uh, so part A. Well, before part A, let's say let f of x be a function. Uh, okay, assume I have some real number A, which is in the domain of x. So this is, I mean, it makes sense now. F of A is a, it's some value. Okay? It's not dividing by zero. It's really in the domain. I'm not sure if I use this notation yet. The domain of F. Right, so if A is in the domain of F, then we say that F is continuous. at A if the limit as x goes to A of f of x is equal to f of A. Which in words, if f hits, it, hits its target. principle makes sense what I'm saying you know you have you have some function and you say okay at this point I have a target you always have a target of the function right fine does it hit the target if it does it's continuous at that point if it doesn't it's not continuous we call it discontinuous okay. and well I could have a really nice function which is continuous at every single point Right? So no matter where you go, it's always going to hit its target. Right? And those are almost the best functions we're going to talk about. Not quite the best functions, but almost the best. Okay. 
They're going to be called continuous functions. So if f is continuous, uh, at every point a in its domain, then we call call f. or we say is a continuous function. So our first approximation of what a really good function looks like is a continuous function. So let's look at this piecewise defined function. Where is it continuous and where is it discontinuous? Well, it's continuous whenever it hits its target. So tell me, is it hitting its target all along here? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Where's the first place it doesn't hit its target? One. One. At, right, at zero. Okay. So k of x is continuous on, so we'll say is continuous on some set. And so it goes from minus infinity to zero, and it is continuous. But at zero, it doesn't hit its target. Right? So it's not continuous at zero. Because okay? it, you know, it hops up here, right? And then it comes down. And now, as you go past zero, is it hitting its target all the time? Absolutely. Okay? So it's also continuous from zero to infinity. So if you like, this is the set of all real numbers except for zero. So it's almost continuous, although I shouldn't use that phrase because mathematicians have a very specific meaning for almost continuous. And that's really horrible, isn't it? it well, it almost hits its target some of the time. That sort of deal. Okay. What about this function here? x squared minus x plus 1. Do you think that's going to be a continuous function? Sure, right? You never have any you know, weird problems with you know, a square. It's just a nice parabola. Right? Of course, it always hits its target. So this is a continuous function. Right? Now, if you look back here at this definition, and of course, we said it's continuous if that hits its target at the point. Okay? But what does that mean mathematically? It means that if you take the limit, you get the same thing as you expected if you just plugged it in. So continuity basically says you can plug in the value. You don't have to worry about this as a limit. You just plug in the value. Now, this is a nice polynomial. And if you ever, and you look at the graph of any polynomial, what do you know about it? It's just some nice smooth function, right? Never have any weird hop arounds or anything. I mean, you'll notice this continuity problem is accompanied by this big jump. And that's this, this is a specific kind of discontinuity called a jump discontinuity. It jumps up. Uh, so, but polynomials never have that problem. All right, anywhere, right? At every point, they're okay. Which means that polynomials are always continuous functions. So whenever you have the limit of a polynomial, boom, you just plug in whatever the x value you're approaching. So I already said at the beginning, but you never, ever plug in the value, right? Because you don't care about what happens at that point. But as soon as you know it's a continuous function, then you can forget that rule and just plug in the value. So generally, all polynomials are continuous. Let's look at another example. Let's look at the limit as x goes to 0 of 1 over x. So 
what's the target? One over x. Zero? Does one over x approach zero? Okay, let's say you take some small number like a half. One over a half is two. Put in a third, a fourth, a fifth, what do you get? One over a fifth is five, one over a tenth is ten. So as you approach zero, it's actually getting bigger, right? If I put in one over a trillion into this, then I get one over one over a trillion, which is a trillion. So what's happening to this thing? It's going up to infinity, right? It's getting as big as possible. So am I right to put down infinity? Why not? What's that? Well, one over infinity doesn't make sense because infinity isn't a number. Right? So you can't write one over infinity. Okay. But certainly, as you get closer to zero, you know, you take smaller positive numbers. Right? This thing does blow up. I mean, look at the the graph. All right, what's happening to one over x as you get close to zero? This does that, right? So, you know, it, it wouldn't be so wrong to say that it goes to infinity, right? The target is infinity. But what am I not checking? The other side. Ah, the other side. <laughs> right? I've only checked the right side. So what I can write is this expression, but with a plus on the zero. Okay. So as I approach zero from this side, well, the only reasonable thing to say is that it's going up to infinity. So this is the first example of an infinite limit, right? which is something we'll talk about more. What if I went from the other side? suggesting that it's negative infinity. Does that make sense? Let's see. Well, if you put in small negative numbers, like minus a half, right? well, then you get 1 over minus a half, which is minus 2. If you put in 1 over minus 1 over 10, you get negative 10. And if you put in negative 1 over a trillion, then you get negative a trillion. Right? And of course, if you graph this thing, which is a hyperbola, it just goes down like that. So from the left side, the target is negative infinity. Okay, so what is then the limit as x goes to 0 to 1 over x? Everybody can say this at once. It does not exist, right? I have two one-sided limits, and they're not the same. So it does not exist. Now, what if I went anywhere else but zero? If I go anywhere else but zero, are the limits always going to exist? Right? Am I always going to hit the target? No. No. Who says, who believes no? OK, where am I, where am I going to have a problem? Well, infinity is not a number. Well, everywhere, right? Because if you try to take the limit of negative 2, it doesn't approach it from the right. So, well, let's see. So, negative 2, right? So, this should be a negative a half. Well, as I approach from the left, it goes to minus a half. And as I approach from the right, it goes to minus a half. You know, you don't do it for the top. Or ah, okay, so this is a good question, right? As a, if, let's say I, I start approaching it, but I don't approach it from so close. Right? Maybe I start approaching it from over here. Is that what you're... Yes, that's, that's what I was thinking. Okay, that's an excellent question. What's the answer? Well, the answer is, when we talk about limits, we don't really care about what happens to the function 
far away from the point. We only care what happens to the function really close to the point. Now that's not a very good definition because I didn't tell you what the heck it means to be close to the point. You know, sometimes close might be within one, sometimes it might be a half, sometimes it might be very, very small. Right? To answer it correctly, that's where we would have to use all this rigor about epsilons and deltas and all this. There, there is a very formal definition which gives a precise meaning to very close, right? which we're not going to give. But suffice to say, we only care about what I would call a neighborhood of this point. So I just go a little bit to the left and a little bit to the right, and look what happens. Now, again, you have to be careful what you mean by a little bit, because that's not precise. In math, you have to be very precise. When I say a little bit, what does that mean a little bit? You know, it's kind of like my wife will say, I bought a shirt today. And I said, oh, really? How much was it? Oh, well, it was pretty cheap. What do I have to do? I have to ask the same question again. OK, how much was it? A little cheap, I don't know what you mean by a little cheap, right? Okay, the same thing here. I'm going to say, okay, I'm a little bit away. Okay, uh, just for now, it just means you can make it as close as you want. And you're only looking very, very close. Right? You're kind of zooming in on it as much as possible. And just seeing what it's doing near that point. Right? So, but that is an excellent observation, right? When I'm approaching it, I'm not approaching it from arbitrarily far away. I'm just approaching it from very close. Okay, so, so let's get back to this question. What happens on this function if we're not looking at the limit as we approach zero? Does the limit always exist? And is it always equal to the actual evaluation of that function? Right. Any ideas? And it, does anybody have another observation that's okay if it's still not going to exist ever? Yes? Um, it's never going to cross the horizontal axis either. I, I don't know really how to say it, but... That's true, right? It won't ever cross the horizontal axis. Does that cause a problem when it comes to the limit? So, so you might be thinking, but okay, if it's getting close to the horizontal axis, then it must be targeting the horizontal axis, right? And it never gets there. So that's a problem, right? Why isn't it a problem? Well, what do we target? Do we target the axis? Are we targeting some point like that? Or, if we look back at the definition of continuity, right? are we targeting the function at a specific point? We're always targeting at a specific point. So, it's okay that in the long run it never hits the x-axis down here. Because all we ever care is that at some point, does it hit the target at that point? Okay. So if I pick minus 2, my target is minus a half, and yes, it sure does hit it. And so it turns out that, yes, absolutely, at any point other than 0, it will hit its target. And so it's continuous everywhere away from 0. So like this function, it'll be continuous on the set of real numbers that are not 0. And in general, if you have any function divided by another function, where the top and bottom are both continuous functions, then it will, the whole, the quotient will be continuous, except when you get a zero on the bottom. And so next time we'll write that up more precisely. 